So today I'm going to be showing you the coolest thing I've ever found on Linux. And if that doesn't entice you, I don't know what will, because I have found a lot of really cool things on Linux over the years, and I've shared a lot of them with you. But today, I think takes the cake. Today, I'm going to be talking about DistroBox. Now, you've probably heard of DistroBox before. A lot of YouTubers have made videos on this before, and I kind of got left in the dust because I heard the term container, and I was like, eh... You know, I don't really care about containers. I'm not a developer. What could I possibly need a can container for? Because I, I hear container, I think Kubernetes and Podman and and all these words that I just, what do they even mean? You know, I, I, I don't know what a container is. Outside of flat packs, I couldn't tell you. I, I can barely even spell the word. That's not true, but you get the idea, right? I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything about containers other than the, you know, ba the most basic idea of them. And... Beyond that, I don't really have a need for containers, right? I, I just have never truly thought that I did. But I was a fool. <laughs> okay, you know, I have been missing out on DistroBox, and it is a shame because DistroBox is really, really freaking cool. Now, today, I'm going to be taking you through a couple of the features of DistroBox. And when I say a couple, what I mean is just a couple because there are so so many more things that you can do with DistroBox than the few things that I'm going to show you today. I highly recommend, after you watch this video and give it a thumbs up, I highly recommend you head on over to the website, which I'll link to in the video description, right below the like button. Damn it, Matt, stop that. <laughs> you should head on over to their website and give the documentation a look because the documentation is fantastic and it really does tell you a lot about the things that you can do with DistroBox that I'm not going to cover today. But... I'm going to show you a few things. So, first, what is DistroBox? Why am I going crazy over it? Well, the idea here is that it is a container that allows you to run a Linux distribution inside of it. Basic idea, although I'm sure the techno technology stuff behind it is very complicated, well beyond me. But the idea is fairly simple. You can run a contained environment, usually with a Linux distribution inside of it, on top of another bare metal Linux distro. So that's the idea. So for example, I'm on Debian on my main machine right now. If I wanted to, I could use DistroBox to create an Arch Linux container and run Arch inside of that container. Now at that level, if we just stopped right there, that's cool enough. But what would I use it for, right? Why, why do I need access to Arch on top of Debian? I could just create a virtual machine for that. Well, DistroBox creates many different advantages over a virtual machine. First of all, and the biggest one probably, is shared hardware support. So if you wanted to have access to your USB stuff, you could have access to your USB right inside of the container without doing anything, right? You don't have to do anything special like you would if you were wanting to do so in a virtual machine. And the big one, and I can't even begin to tell you how big this is, is GPU pass-through. If you've ever tried to pass a GPU from your host machine to a virtual machine, you'll know that it is a pain in the ass. It is not an easy process, and it gets harder when you're talking about you know multiple different GPUs and all this stuff. It, it's not an easy process. With DistroBox, all of that stuff is automatic. Now, it's automatic when you have an AMD or an Intel GPU. If you have an NVIDIA, there are a couple extra things that you have to do. Unfortunately, I don't have an NVIDIA card, so I can't show you those things, but the documentation, again, is very, very good, and it's, from what I've read, really not all that difficult in order to set it up, so it's just a couple extra steps. So if you wanted to pass your GPU through, if you have an NVIDIA one, you do those extra steps. If not, and you have an AMD or Intel, it's automatic. And what that means is that if you wanted to, you could install, say, Steam or one of the other game launchers inside of your distro box and run games from it using your dedicated hardware. Now, why you'd want to do that, I'm not actually sure, because probably your host machine would run it just fine anyways. But let's just say, for whatever reason, you are completely against using flat packs. So you are on Debian and you don't want to use flat packs. So you're going to be using an older version of Steam if you're using it for, getting it from a repository somewhere. And you want the most recent version of Steam, but you don't want to use a flat pack. So you could use DistroBox theoretically to do that. That's a really weird example. A better example is probably like Firefox. So let's just say you wanted to use uh, regular old Firefox. You didn't want to use the ESR version of Firefox on Debian. You could install Firefox in a Arch Linux container or Arch Linux DistroBox, you should say, and just run Firefox, the brand new spanking version from that container. 
there are many different scenarios that you can think of, of situations where you want the most recent version of something, but your distribution doesn't have it, or let's just say your distribution doesn't package it, right? If, there, if there's something from the AUR that you want, but you're running Debian, you can install an Arch Linux DistroBox and get that package from the AUR. It's really, really cool. So I'm like, I'm like five minutes into this video. I haven't even shown you anything about this. So let's go ahead and jump in. I, I have so much to show you. This video is going to be phenomenally long, but it's, it's really super cool. So I hope you guys stick around because it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's awesome. So first off, you have to install DistroBox. It's very, very easy. Just sudo apt install distrobox, sudo pacman-s install distrobox, sudo dnf install distrobox. You get the idea. It's in all the repositories and it just downloads and you're ready to go. That's really all there is to it. Now, the first thing you want to do before you start messing around with things is look at the documentation. So if we go to a browser here and go to their website, you can see that it has really good documentation and it's very well laid out. So the first thing that we're actually going to want to do is go to the compatibility list for the container distros. These are the distributions that it supports. So there are 20, maybe 30 different distributions that they support, although it's not really nearly as many as you think it is because a lot of these here are duplications. So the reason why there are duplicates is because the ones that have toolbox next to their name are more suited towards actually using them. They have more packages and stuff that it actually includes when you install the distro box. The ones without toolbox are more minimal. So you'd be kind of more on your own to set those things up. So if you're kind of looking to use one of these things out of the box, install one of the ones that have toolbox next to the name. So today we're going to actually install Fedora. So in order to do that, we're going to need this URL here. So I'm going to install Fedora 38. I'm going to take this URL here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to a terminal. I'm going to do distro box create and then dash I for image like so. I'm going to copy that URL that we just copied. And then I'm going to do dash N and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this Fedora one and then i'm going to hit enter okay so once that is done and it doesn't take very long it's going to give me a command to run so i have that command right here i'm going to copy that and paste it into the terminal and I'm going to enter now it's going to take a couple minutes here to actually install the fedora onto the container it doesn't usually take any more any longer than two minutes or so most of the time it doesn't even take that and you'll see some output here once it actually gets going so i'm going to cut the video here and i'll come back okay so once it's done you're actually going to be inside of the container already you can see that by your host name changing so in this case it's going to be the name that we gave it up above so i gave this the container name of fedora one so if i want to say use neofetch i do sudo dnf install neofetch I'm also going to install EXA so that I can do LSs here. And while it's doing that, I'm going to explain something that's cool. So basically what DistroBox does is it uses your home directory. And when I say your home directory, what I mean is the host machine's home directory. So if you have configuration files in your .config or if you have things in your home directory, it's going to use all those things. So one of the things that you'll want to see here is that it's actually going to use my configuration file for neofetch from my home directory so if i do neofetch here just like so it's actually going to you're going to see the little debian logo there you're going to see the little kitty ascii art that i have on my regular machine so if i actually go to my uh, reg my regular machine you can see i'm on debian here and it's using that particular configuration file for neofetch so i've just installed fedora packages basically on debian Okay, that's basically what I've just done. Now, it's more complicated than that, obviously, but if I do an LS here, you can see that it's just using my home directory that I have on my host machine. So I have a, a directory here called test right now. If I go to my other tab here and do an LS inside of my home directory, an actual home directory, you can see that test file exists in both places. So if I were to in, inside of the container, if I were to do rm-rf test, and then I go back to the home directory here and do that ls again you can see that the test directory has been deleted so it's using your home directory the rest of the files on the system are contained inside of the container so your your etsy directory your user directory all that stuff is inside of the container and all the applications that you install are inside of the container so the neofetch that i installed on debian doesn't work on fedora i have to install it in both places now that's not technically true and that's kind of the point of the video but we're not there yet so just hold on the thing that is awesome about 
DistroBox, besides the fact that you can install packages, is that you can actually use those packages. So you can imagine a scenario, like I said earlier, where there's a package on in the AUR that you want that you can't get on Debian. So you know whether that you know it's a font or a library or a window manager or something like that if you want to get those but it's not on debian what would you do normally you'd have to build it from source or you'd have to distro hop those are usually your options right well now that you have distrobox you can actually install those things from the aur so what i'm going to do here actually is i'm going to exit out of this fedora distrobox and i'm going to enter into one that i created earlier so i'm going to do distrobox enter arch linux toolbox okay and if i do a neofetch dash dash config here so that it uses the stock configuration file you can say this is arch linux and this is just a arch linux toolbox that i've been using for a little while and i've installed things on this so here's the coolest thing or one of the coolest things about distrobox i have in this container firefox but in my on my debian machine if i were to search for firefox and actually, so you don't spell it correctly, you'd see I have no Firefox. I have no foxes, but I have it in the container. So if I go to a terminal on my host machine and run this command here. Now, remember, there's no Firefox on my main system. If I run this command here, basically what this does is it this is a path to a command. It has a couple options. It has the name of the container, and then it has the name of the application that I want to start. Now, remember, no Firefox on the main machine, but if I hit enter here, bam, Firefox. Okay, this Firefox is running inside of that container, but I can use it just like regular normal Firefox. Now, starting things from the terminal, not always the most convenient thing. So you could take this line of or this command here and put it in a dot desktop file and then put it in your one of your paths and you could actually get that to show up inside of Rofi or dmenu or one of your application files and basically what it's just going to do is run that command and it would start firefox and it would you'd be using firefox inside of arch linux while using debian it's inception okay and it's magic and I'm pretty sure the people who created this are wizards. Okay, now, I know, guys, it's just Firefox, Matt. Why are you freaking out about Firefox? But the thing is, is it's not just Firefox. You could do DaVinci Resolve, because DaVinci Resolve is notoriously hard to install on some distributions. Installing it on Debian is almost impossible, okay? It's not actually impossible, but it's not easy. But it's actually much easier on Fedora or CentOS or one of the RHEL-based distributions, right? You can create a distro box of one of those distributions, install DaVinci Resolve, and it's much easier, right? And you could just use this command here, but with DaVinci Resolve and launch it from your run launcher and just use it as if it was a native application installed on Debian. That's really cool. Now, obviously we wouldn't just be here if I could, if I was just talking about Firefox or DaVinci Resolve or some random package from the AUR. What if I told you this applied to desktop environments and window managers as well? Well, why is that cool? Well, first of all, if you were in this position I was in a week ago where I could not get Qtile to install on Debian, some of that was because of, you know, version numbers and stuff like that. I ended up having to use Nix in order to install Qtile. But if I had been using DistroBox at the time, I could have actually bypassed Nix and just used DistroBox. So basically what I'm talking about here is that I can install, say, let's say, Awesome Window Manager. I can install that from my Arch Linux DistroBox and actually use it on my Debian machine. Okay, now, obviously... Our awesome window manager is also in the Debian repository, so it's not that cool, but you could use things like Hyperland. So Hyperland is not inside of the Debian repositories, as far as I'm aware, but it is in the AUR. So you could download the Hyperland from the AUR and install it in your Arch Linux distro box and run it from Debian basically. Uh, same thing with Qtel. Qtel is not in the Debian repositories. So I could install that from the AUR and run that from my Arch Linux distro box or from my Fedora distro box or wherever, right? I can do it from anywhere where that package happens to exist. Just create that distro box and then run it. Now, obviously there's a way to do that and I'm going to show you that. But the idea here isn't necessarily to show you exact how to, but to show you how cool it is, because I, I, like I said at the beginning, I implore you to go check out 
the documentation because there's so much more to this that I'm not explaining and I'm probably not explaining what I am explaining very well, but I'm trying here. So go check out the, the, the documentation. It's going to save you a lot of my blabbering. So let's go ahead and uh, close this out here. So let's go ahead and install Awesome Window Manager. So I need to, in order to do that, I need to go back to my Arch Linux toolbox and do sudo pacman-s, I actually need to spell that right, and then awesome. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter here and it's gonna do its thing, okay? And then what I'm going to need to do is while I'm still inside of the container, and I'm going to need to find the dot desktop file for awesome window manager. So I'm gonna do an ls here of user share x sessions. Now remember that this is on the container. It's in my distro box. By design, any user files like you in the user directory or inside of Etsy or whatever, those are not accessible to the host. All right. These are not things that I could access from my Debian system, but the home directory is. So in order for me to boot into awesome from my Debian machine, I need to have that dot desktop file inside of my user directory on my host machine. So in order to do that, I'm going to do CP awesome desktop, and then I'm going to do tilde slash. Okay. Now, once that's done, and I've seen that I have that in my home directory, I can exit out of my container here. Just hit, hit exit, it'll exit out of the container. Now I'm technically back in my Debian machine and I'm going to go to my scripts folder and I'm gonna create the following script. So this script here does two things. So it's going to tell it that it's a script, so that's not really a thing that I counted. And that's going to use this line here. This line here basically tells your host machine and distro box that the user that you're using is you, if that makes any sense. It's more complicated than that, but basically it's just telling the host that it's the local user trying to execute a command, okay? Uh, it's because otherwise it's not going to know what users has permission to do so. It's, like I said, it's more complicated than that, but you need that line inside of a script, okay? And then you need this line here. Now we've used this line before, okay? We, when we launched Firefox, we used this exact line. So it's the path to distrobox test ender, the dash t and dash n flags, and the name of the container. So in this case, it's Arch Linux dash toolbox, dash dash, and then awesome. Now, this particular line right here comes from the container and the binary of the window manager that you're trying to launch. So if you if you don't know what this is, go back into your container, do an ls of slash user bin, and then grep for the name of the, the window manager that you want to find. So if you're doing Hyperland, do a grep for Hyperland. It's probably right in there. Basically, what you're just wanting to make sure is that it's in that particular path or it's in your path somewhere. Usually, it's just the name of the window manager. Some of them have the dash session after that so you really want to make sure that you're using the right name here for awesome it's awesome okay that's really all it needs to be so you're gonna, you're gonna want to save this and then you're going to want to chmod plus x awesome which is the name of the script okay so now that you have that you need to go back into your home directory and you're going to want to vim into that awesome dot desktop file and you're going to want to make it look like this okay so basically what we're doing here is we're executing that script that we just created okay that script that we just created inside of our scripts directory so there's actually one thing that i need to show you so go ahead and finish this put the path to that script you'll want it inside of your path your capital p-a-t-h path Okay, and that's the reason why it's slash usual local bin awesome. Uh, that's the thing that I missed here. So if you want to, if you go back to where that script was, so our script right here is awesome. You're going to want to do sudo cp awesome, or actually you're going to want to do the whole path. Uh, no, the whole, just that will work actually. We're not doing a link. And then you want to do user local bin. Okay, just like that. It'll ask you for your password. Mine's already there, so I don't need to, sh to do that. Basically what that does is it makes it executable system wide. All right. So you don't have to use the whole path. So that's why this says user local bin awesome. That's where that script that you created actually needs to be. So once you've done that, you can save this and then you are ready to log into awesome. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to save the video here. I'm going to log out 
and I'm gonna show you Awesome, okay? It's gonna be Awesome Window Manager. Now, you always gotta remember that Awesome Window Manager is available in the Debian repository, so this isn't as cool as it could possibly be. I could have done Hyperland, but then I would have to set up all Wayland and stuff like that. I tried XFC, so before, actually, before I hop out of this, I do wanna put, throw some caution out there. So, with certain particular desktop environments and stuff like that, they're expecting some Dbus paths to be there and XDG DIRs to be set in proper order. And if those directories and stuff aren't in their proper places, your desktop environment may not launch and you may need to do some finagling to get them to run, okay? So I tried XFC4, I didn't have a chance to troubleshoot, it would not launch. So just know that it's not always going to be just as simple as doing the things that I just showed you. You may find some extra things that you have to do depending on the desktop environment or window manager that you're choosing. So that's the reason why I'm choosing awesome because I know that this will work. So it just works out of the box. So anyways, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to come back and show you awesome. Okay, here we are inside of awesome window manager. Now, first of all, the audio may have quality may have dropped down a little bit. I'm going to try to edit to make sure I could not get audacity to actually use my microphone. I don't know what's going on there because OBS is working fine. Pulse mixer said it was fine. Don't know what's going on there. It doesn't really matter. Usually I record in, in audacity, but right now we're recording in OBS. It doesn't matter. So uh, as you can see, I'm inside of Arch Linux using awesome window manager which we installed inside of a container on debian so this is actually debian but it's a container running on top of it you're running arch linux and that's awesome okay it's the coolest thing i've ever seen now i i know that that i i keep going on about this but i can't kind of get over the fact that i installed awesome inside of a container now like I said, Awesome isn't the best example that I could have used. I could have used Qtile. I could have used something like Hyperland. I could have used XFCE if I could have gotten it to run. That was the original idea. Something that I just did not have on my main system that I could have installed. And it, it, Awesome, it was there. But it, the idea here is that you can install whatever you want and actually run it. And that gives you an enormous amount of possibilities to choose from when it comes to packages, package package managers, basically anything you can think of. If, if you want to broaden your horizons to a different distribution, but you don't want to hop off the distro that you're on, you can go install Gentoo inside of your distro box and it would work. You could use a merge. You could use all of the use flags that you want to use. You could do all of that stuff inside of Gentoo on top of Debian. You know, you don't have to install a virtual machine and it will have GPU pass through. It will have your networking pass through. It will do all the things that it needs to do to install it. And all you have to do is install your packages on top of it. And it's, it's awesome. You can do Gentoo. You can do OpenSUSE. You can do Red Hat. You name the distro. Basically, it's there for the most part, obviously. The the smaller distros not going to be there. They don't focus on Arch-based distros, so you're not going to go find Zero Linux or Endeavor OS or something like that. You're just going to get the main big ones, right? But you get the idea. And for me, this all opens up a whole bunch of testing opportunities for myself. You know, it gives me the opportunity to use the AUR, which I miss from when I used Arch Linux, but I don't have to switch away from the stability that is Debian. That is so cool. So... Yeah, that is DistroBox. Now, like I said at the beginning, I only scratched the surface. I don't even think I scratched the surface. I just touched the surface. You know, I didn't make a dent in this thing. There are so many more things that you can do. If you're a developer, this gives you a whole bunch of options for having different versions of libraries and stuff that you can incorporate into your code. And you can do all of your compiling inside of a different you know, distro. You can do a whole bunch of testing on different distros, all of this stuff. And it makes it so much easier than setting up a whole bunch of virtual machines and then having to deal with, you know, GPU pass through, USB pass through, you know, different weird resolutions and stuff like that you have to deal with and you're dealing with a virtual machine. And you don't have to download all the ISOs, right? Like technically, yes, you're downloading the stuff from the ISO, but it's all minimal and you install the stuff that you want extra on top of it, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, a four gigabyte ISO or anything like that. And you don't have to have all those packages just lying around. The options here for you to do things, whether you're a developer or just a regular user, are so cool and i'm so looking for I, i'm this is going to be work this is going to work its way into my daily workflow and it may just take over from so i've been using virtual machines as my workflow over the course of the last couple months maybe three months or so and i've been really liking that it's possible that i can use distrobox instead now i, I am 
I haven't really thought that process through yet, how I can maintain the privacy and stuff that I was looking for in a virtual machine. Uh, and I need to learn more about this, obviously, but the possibilities are there. And I think the possibilities are endless. And I'm, I'm so excited that I was able to share it with you guys. So uh, uh, that is Distrobox. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know I didn't do as well a job of explaining this as I possibly could have. It was kind of all over the place. Uh, so don't take any of this stuff really as a how-to. Again, check out the documentation. There's also a blog post that I will leave in the video description showing you how to install window managers and stuff like that. that that's where I got all of the scripts and stuff that I showed you earlier. So you can follow that along there. It explains it much better than I did. So definitely check that stuff out before you actually do this because, again, it's, it's easier to do from someone else's a uh, how-to than mine. It's just my mine wasn't quite uh, as coherent as I wanted to. But I recorded this video three times. If, before I actually jump out of this, I want to give a big shout out to George Castro. He answered my questions and he did. He always answers my questions so very patiently. So thank you, George, for your support and your, your just being pure awesome. So follow him over on uh, Mastodon. He, he's awesome. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, again, comments in the comment section below. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for PayPal and YouTube will be in the video description if you'd rather support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.